Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. to the Knit Chat Cafe. I'm Kelly. This is I'm my friend, Noelle. We yep. are together, Knit to Pieces. We are a um, multi-crafting, but mostly knitting podcast. And this is our extremely informal weekly chat where we get together with uh, everyone and hang out in the Knit Chat Cafe. And we welcome everybody that's in here tonight, new and old alike, and uh, hope that you're near a keyboard so you can get in on some of the conversation that we're going to be having. Um, yeah. So it looks like Valerie was in here first. So thank yeah. you, Valerie, for being the pre-show host. I saw you making many comments to everybody as they arrived. So yeah. well, do you want to do some hellos? And make it making everybody feel welcome. That's awesome, Valerie. Awesome. So thank you. Um, we've got, well, we've got Valerie. Hi, Valerie. And we've Hi, got Valerie. um Cricket and Lynn. And Lynn says she's finally thrilled to catch a live. So that's awesome. We're glad you're here too, Lynn. And we've got Maurice and Maurice. We met Maurice in, Yay! in Montreal. And <laughs> Maurice. It was so nice. So, so hi, nice Maurice. to meet her. Um, and we've got Susie and we've got Elaine and Wendy. And who else is here? Let's see. We've got Trudy. Um, we've got Beth. You guys were having a good little chat before we started here. We've got Sue, we've got <laughs> we've got Wendy, we've got Susie, we've got Lynn. Lillian's here, Kristen's here, Rebecca, Michelle, Carol, um, Margo's here, Vicki. Uh, we've got Karen and Sue and Gail and Shirley and Laura and Lise, Gwen, Klaska, hi Klaska. Um, we've got Susie, Karen, Janie, hi Janie, Jan, Elizabeth. Um, we've got Kathy. Laura, Betty, uh, Monica, Janet, Mary, Catherine, wow, Nara, Joy, <laughs> Shirley, hi Shirley, we've got Amy, wow, you guys have been busy in here. Busy, <laughs> so busy, busy. Got, yeah, we've got Darlene and Marnie and Vicky and Barb and Gail and I'm still not even caught up, but anyways, welcome everybody if you're new um thank you so much for joining us we you know we usually have a, a really good time in here we talk about knitting we talk about other things um yes. but we always have fun yes so, we do we do so welcome to everybody <clears throat> yes so. um there's a lot in here i swear we're gonna need a bigger knit chat cafe that's why i know I think. we're gonna I need know. a bigger we room are. never we're mind a big... bigger raft we're gonna need a bigger <laughs> <Yeah>. room <laughs> that's right you guys are gonna have to drink a lot more wine a lot that, more wine to make that more that corks, bigger more that's corks. right we need more corks so anyway so we um are joining you after our big weekend in montreal, montreal. <laughs> so yes. we just got home we just got home last night late late it was later than planned <laughs> later than planned the train was a little late well more than a little late well yeah. not not anyway we yeah, basically got late. on a train. We got on a train at 11 o'clock in the morning and we got off a train at 11 o'clock at 11 o'clock at night. So but but lots of knitting time. Yeah. And it was worth it. We had an amazing time. Yes. Yes, we did. So um, and happy birthday to Janie. I know she's in Hi, here Janie, tonight. Happy birthday. Yeah. Goodness. There we go. I'm I'm happy still birthday, Janie. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Confetti birthday. Birthday confetti. Yes, absolutely. Oh, there we go. Oh gosh. Yeah, so it, it was a so weekend. today was a for me today was a recovery day. Yes. Because I was, I mean, I'm normally in bed by like somewhere between nine and ten o'clock. And Kelly made me stay up like past midnight a couple of nights. <laughs> I think all and of the nights we were up past midnight. No sure. daytime nap. And like, like basically, <laughs> basically go, go, go. And then last night I was so wound up after we got home. I just, it was after midnight or it was after 1230 by the time I went to bed. I was just so yep. wound up, kind of had to let the brain relax and calm down. And yes. so today was, you know, back to, back to the exercise. I went to see my mom and I had a nap. <laughs> so, so I'm refreshed. <sighs> uh, okay. So 
what can we say about Knit City? It was fabulous. It, it was, was wonderful. It was awesome. We're already uh, counting the days until the next one. Yeah. Uh, we have definitely determined that we'll be going again. Uh, as long as there is one. Uh, but yeah. it, it was just, it was great. Uh, it was busy. I, it was I busy. tried. It was very I, busy. I tried to keep posting some stories, some things that we were doing along the way. It seemed to go by so quickly. We thought, oh, I've still got time to do this. I've still got time to do this. And it, it just well, flew. I mean, to be fair, like in the, in the marketplace, you really, we really couldn't. I mean, we did talk to some of the vendors like the next day, but you really couldn't take a lot of time away from them because they're busy with their customers, right? Yes. And especially on Saturday, Saturday, especially. Yes, it was so busy. It was just you really couldn't. And that's not, that's, that's not fair to the other, the other people attending the show. And it's not no. fair to the vendors either, because that's what they're there for. That's right. Yeah. Right? That's, you know, they've, they've had two years where they couldn't get out and vend at shows either. So it was, uh, I think everybody was just super excited. It was, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm tired of wearing a mask on my face after yeah, that this, was, it was this past few days, but it's, um, it was good. Uh, uh, Mary says she likes the picture of us standing side by side. We get to see the height difference that you talk about. Oh, goodness. It's 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 funny because when we're on here together and like if I look at the screen, we look similar and I sort of forget that, too. And then when we're together in person, I just realize like it's it's a very apparent size difference. And well, a few I don't people really... that came up to us said, oh, you look just like you do. Like we didn't didn't realize like there'd be so much difference. But <laughs> But, but you know what, like, but I don't realize that I'm that short until I see a picture or, or a mirror. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. So it was, it but was anyway, good. but that's it okay. Fun. It was fun. Yes. Um, so yeah. yes, we have lots of pictures. Um, and okay. So here's the thing. So we're not, if you tuned in here tonight to see the yarn hall, we are sorry to disappoint, but here's what we did. This is, this is even better. <laughs> so we actually did some interviews throughout the weekend with some people. We, um, we did a little side trip. We left left the festival. We actually went over to Espas Trico. And then uh, on yesterday morning, before we vacated the hotel room and ran to the train, we actually filmed a podcast. And uh, <laughs> I spent today putting it all together, all the interviews, all the clips. And so it's, it's uploaded to YouTube. And Noelle is still doing the show notes for us. Yeah. So as of 8, 8 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern daylight savings time you could <laughs> check in and see what knits and pieces was up to at the festival because it is just it is a uh, knit city um episode and so it's uh, i think i called it uh, montreal uh, hmm. montreal Anyways, it'll be <laughs> i don't know knits. it's it'll there be the it'll be brand new this episode going up tomorrow morning <laughs> absolutely so. and so hopefully you will see that and enjoy it and uh you'll get to see the the uh, all of the yarn that we got and there was there was i like to think we made a dent but we did um, our yeah let's just say kelly, we did our part there kelly <laughs> did a great job talking to some of the vendors like she's got the technical side of that all down i'm just like walking around looking at all the yarn <laughs> but it was it was it was a lot of fun it was, it a was lot of fun. so much so we fun. were actually at the marketplace on the saturday morning which was super busy and then again on the um Sunday afternoon which went mm -hmm. basically till five o'clock and we were there we were there till five o'clock yeah basically because um Sheila was there with us Sheila that we've met through the podcast mm -hmm. she was there and she actually had her coat and checkout and when she went to get her coat it was pretty much the last coat in the checkout oh really <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so so we were there right till right till the end and even then like it really didn't get it really didn't get to the point where all the vendors were free to talk. Like it was still relatively busy mm -hmm. right till. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so. anyway, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a good episode. It it's was a good episode. Well, it was a good time. It, it was, was a good, good time. time. It would be hard so. not to put a good episode. It went by that. so fast. So quick. Like, and we were there we're four going, days. I know every day we're going, it's three o'clock already. It's like, it's like seven o'clock already. <laughs> I think on the last night, though, uh, after we went out to dinner, we got back and it was a pretty early night that we were back in the room. And I think I looked at my watch and it was 10 o'clock and I said, wow, it's 10 o'clock. It, <laughs> it feels like two o'clock. It had been such a long, long day, such a long day. So anyway, that's yeah, that's that. 
And yes. um, well, we can yeah. we can tell some of the little things like we had poutine. Yes, well, <laughs> it was okay. good. When in Montreal, one must. It was good. It was really it was good. good. And yeah. uh, we also had <laughs> at the at the Toronto uh, Union Station on oh, our way yeah. there and on yes. the way back. We had uh, spicy chicken shawarma. <laughs> we figured it was okay. We're so traveling together. Uh, we had it in a box, complete with the pickled turnips, the dill pickles, the garlic sauce on top. And oh my gosh, it was amazing, amazing. And uh, I wish I could remember the name of the restaurant. Well, it was the only one that had shawarma in yep. Union Station. I just remember it saying Middle, Middle Eastern foods, but I can't remember what that Paramount. Was the actual was, was paramount, paramount? Okay. yes and it was so so and good. i mean like for food that you get in a food court at a train station it was amazing excellent excellent so so it was so good that we actually had to <laughs> have it again yesterday on our way home <laughs> and i thought we're crazy crazy people having all this spicy food before we get on and then all i could think about last night was we're coming home to husbands they are not going to let us sleep in the same bed as them they're going to make me sleep in the spare room but uh, it was all anyway. good. He was happy to see me. The cat was happy to see me. Everybody. Yeah. It was good. All good. Uh, glad to be yes. home. We Ross, got to go to Ross knit night. Glad to see me. Yes, we got we to did. go to that knit night uh, there. And mm -hmm. okay. So there were about the same number of people at knit night as we normally have tuned into an episode here. And let me tell you, it's a big room. It's a really big room. So um, it was full and it was so much fun. And mm -hmm. it was, aside from that, like I, I was almost on, um, okay, well, bear in mind, none of us have seen people in that That's right. number for a couple That's of right. years. And then to go to a festival where there are that many people. And then on top of that, it was a sweater that we were so, or sorry, a, a festival that we were so keenly interested in. It was sweater overload. Like it just like you couldn't stop looking around at all of the beautiful, beautiful knitwear that was just like parading in front of you. Yeah. And um, yeah. 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 So, so we've got a few more people in so here good. now too. Julie is here and Dorothy and Sarah. Sarah says she's eaten at Paramount in Ottawa. So she thinks it's a chain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we don't have one in Sarnia. We never get anything good in Sarnia. <laughs> Probably best that they don't come because I would be a you're, frequent yeah, you're flyer probably there. Right, you're probably right. Oh, yeah. my son-in-law's here. He said he's got us up on the living room TV. Oh, great. Yeah, that's where we need to be. Yeah, big oh, screens. Hi, Scylla. Scylla's joining us from Iceland. That, hi, that's a, hi. that's a cork wrap stop for sure. Absolutely. That came in so, pretty high. That uh, yes, we had a did. lot of. We should talk about that too. Yes, um, we should. We should. Overwhelmed, overwhelmed yes. by the responses that we got um yeah it's yeah so on last on last week's knit chat we kind of introduced our new logo for the knit chat cafe and we had made up some little goodie bags um yeah that just have a few of our favorite things in it like we've got the the pony cord for your stitches Mm -hmm. Like when you're either trying on a sweater or you want to put sleeves on hold, or we even discovered on the weekend, even if you were doing a hat, like even like this, if I wanted to try this on, yeah. I could just stick a piece of the pony cord, pull my stitches out, and I could try the hat on without losing my stitches mm -hmm. or having to put it on a waist yarn. Um, and we've also got some little light bulb stitch markers in there because we use those for lots of things. We use them when we're doing sleeves to keep track of all your... Um, <laughs> sleeve increases or decreases and we and also use rows. them well i do i use them on socks mm -hmm. like if i'm counting rows so i'll put one in every 10 rows as opposed yeah. to having to go back okay. and count like 60 rows at once lots of bright and then colors. we've also got some little stitch Ring markers. markers these are our yeah. favorite favorite kinds of stitch markers too whoops because they have the little bead on them so they're just a basic ring yep i don't know if that's showing up Probably not. No, and they don't take up much space on your needle. So they really don't um, really don't let your stitches separate. Mm -hmm. So and they do come in different colors. So even if you wanted to coordinate them for, let's say you wanted a different color for where your where a sleeve increase was mm -hmm. and a different color for your start of round. So you can use them in that way if you want. And yeah, we, we use them all the time. And they're all tucked in a nice little canvas pouch. Yes, that's got our little little logo on it. And then we've also got our other logo on the inside part. 
Mm -hmm. So last week we um, did an instant giveaway on the podcast or on the knit chat for everybody that was watching live. But um, now we wanted to share it with the people that don't necessarily have the, have the ability to watch us live because I mean, different time zones, we're not at a convenient time for everybody. And there's lots of people like at seven o'clock, even in Eastern time that have little kids that are putting them to bed or maybe husbands are home at that time for supper. So we thought like you should have an opportunity to. So we had asked everybody to say, what did we ask that? Oh no, we asked what your favorite knitting tool was. Knitting tool, yes. Yes, yes. So we had lots of great answers. There was a lot of people like the crochet hook for laddering up if you dropped a stitch. Yes, and that's something I don't carry in my knitting bag and on the weekend definitely could have used it because I cast on a project that needed a provisional cast on and Noel and I didn't have a crochet. I hook usually have. Us. And you know what, Kelly? I was surprised because I thought, I'm sure I put those in there. When I got home, I did. They were in the outside pocket of one of my bags. That's okay. I had to finger crochet that onto my knitting needle with my finger. So it took quite a bit of time, but I got it on. It's all good. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was a good tool. Lots of people did say knit companion. And I know for me, knit companion yes. is invaluable, especially That's my rider guy. Color work or lace. Um, what were the other things? The pony cord, mm -hmm. the light bulb stitch markers. Yes. Um, but I'll, oh, well, lots of people like their chai needles or whatever specific brand mm -hmm. like that they like. Uh, yeah. So there was, there were lots of good suggestions and lots of things that help you, you know, get your project. One done very kind easily. person said we were her favorite knitting tool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, something like even watching, um, a video or something like a podcast when you're knitting like that to me that's that is invaluable absolutely you're picking so up things great, and listening all along the that's way that's right sure. so you're spending time with friends and doing your favorite craft mm -hmm. so yeah. oh welcome to kelly we've got a newbie in here she's from ohio she's new to the show welcome kelly that's a name i should be able to remember you should remember that kelly. i should i should <laughs> Okay. Okay. So anyways, so, going back to, oh, Maurice says a bag magnet pin. That's a good idea too. And you know, mm, you were saying, mm -hmm, I wish mm -hmm. I was my, I should bring it over and show it, but I have that acre works, that little round. Um, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And like Kelly's like, how do you put that in your bag? There's like not a top on it. I looked through the bag. Those stitch markers did not come off. They're yeah, all things just don't fall off in your bag, even though it's on a magnet. I get it. But uh, it is a super strong magnet. I'm going to go grab it. Okay. So if you... I don't trip over yarn on the way. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. No accidents. No, no knitting related accidents allowed in here for sure. Okay. So, so something else this... that we could have used this weekend and neither one of us had. So scale. it's something about it's a scale is <laughs> a knitting scale. I have my kitchen scale, but I don't travel with it. But I know that there are lots of little like mini scales that are not a whole lot bigger than this little envelope. Yeah. And Noelle was knitting another muscle burra. And so we like to get down to a certain gram to start decreasing the stitches on the muscle burra. And between the two of us, we had no idea. It's like, well, I don't know. It feels like this. And I, I actually had meant to pack one of mine and I just, I forgot. Mm -hmm. But this is the, this is the acre works tool. Mm hmm. Okay, so what basically I, my stitch, my um, measuring tape is out right now because I was using it, but your measuring tape fits in here. Your scissors are there. I've got way more stitch markers and stuff than what actually came in it. But this, the magnet on this is so strong. Oh, so Oops. now it's now, it, now, <laughs> now it, Okay, anyway, look how many are in there. And like yeah. the scissors don't fall off. Like I've got way more stitch markers in there than what you need. But yes. like it just holds everything. I've got a pin there for your um, changing your cords. Yes. So, and then it does come, it does, I broke my original top, but it does come with a top that's like a, um, to gauge. mark your gauge. Yes. Yep. So even for a quick measure and then all around the sides of it, it's got all your needle sizes. So you just kind of stick your needle in there to see what size mm -hmm. of needle you've got. So that's that is a great handy. tool to have in, yeah. Yeah, to have in your bag. It kind of has everything that you need. So anyway, so the reason that we did that is we were giving away a couple of the little kits for people that watch us after the fact. So mm -hmm. Kelly did a random number generator. Oh, yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> well, not a random, a, ran a, ran a YouTube random comment, oh, picker. comment picker. Sorry. Yeah. And yep. it came up with 
some winners. So this would give the people who aren't able to join us at our time slot an opportunity to win. And the first winner, and you'll have to send us a message. We'll give you that email after um, to get in touch with us. But the first winner is Carrie Petcow. And her favorite knitting tool is always a green stitch marker. This is a fantastic tip, it Carrie. Is, it is a great idea. Green is for go. And I love that tip because yep. that's that's just something that's front of mind. So congratulations, yep. Carrie. I'm going to get a bag out to you. And then just because I was having fun this morning when I was doing this, <laughs> I thought, let's just go for two. So the second winner is Ramona Hines. And her favorite knitting tool was Complete Game Changer. It's her kitchen food scale yeah. that measures to the half gram. And that was relevant to us because we were without one this weekend. And she said that she was so glad that we added this to the giveaways as she always works the evening shift on Tuesdays. And she's jealous of never being able to enter them. So she can only watch after the streaming is over. So congratulations, Ramona. Uh, the pair of you are getting a lovely little bag from us. Yeah. So, and here's how you can get a hold of us right here. If you want to send an email to this email address uh, with your uh, address, then we'll be happy to pop that in the mail for you. So that's that, kitties. Okay. So we've got a Great few more fun. people here. Linda's here. Hi, Linda, from the Fun of Knits. And I think we had Kim from Knitting Posse and Gail. So lots of people in here tonight. So... So if you're if you're new, um, we just want to let you know that this is our this is our knit chat, and we actually do do regular podcasts probably about once every four weeks, and we go through mm -hmm. more information on the projects that we're working on, um, projects that we want to work on, um, things that we finish, or other crafty things that we've kind of gotten into. So, and um, can I just say for both of us that the projects that we want to work on grew exponentially this yes. weekend. Just yes. It's hard to look around and just not say, oh, I want to make that. I want to yep. make that. I want to make that. Yeah. Just. So speaking of that, when we were at the festival on the first day, was it one of the first booths that we went to that had the Samoya yarn? Yes. It, well, I think it was the first. Well, the after first the booth. hallway, it was the first booth. Yes. Right. <clears throat> right. So they had a sock. They had a sock done and it was made in. Samoya yarn, and we've talked about the Samoya yarn in here before, but mm -hmm. we've only worked with, or at least I've only worked with the uh, worsted weight version of it when I did the August or April hats, I can't remember, the hats with the Samoya in them. Well, they had it in fingering weight yarn. And it's not, they actually looked on their website and they do have a sock yarn that actually has nylon in it. But what we bought was the fingering weight yarn, which is 60% Samoya and 40% Merino. And they had a sock done and it was done with that Samoya yarn and what was the other one it was the it was red sock blue sock, blue sock. and it was nubby, nubby fingering. fingering yes <laughs> so because everybody I, likes a good nubby fingering right yeah right. so I had to cast it on I just it was like <laughs> sometimes you see those things and it's like I want to do it and I'm, I need to do it now but I don't know if you can see the the halo on those socks so this is done with the Samoya yarn, and then the body of the sock is held with the nubby fingering, which was like, this color was a, um, what was it? Like a gray pink. I think it was called Josephine, but I'm not positive yes. on that. And so I rolled up the yarn in the hotel room and I took them to knit night and started them. And then I finished them on the train yesterday and they just, they feel, they feel amazing. And they will but, only get softer with wear. And yes, yep. Sarah, it was Poppy's pom-pom. Yes, it was. For the Samoyed. For the Samoyed. Yes. And, and then the other was huge red ball sock, too. Sock. I think, wasn't it like 545 yards? Five, maybe 525. But anyway, I still have, I still probably have enough yarn left in the one skein to do two more pairs of socks with it. And I still had 81 grams of the red sock, blue sock, because it comes in 115 gram skein. And I still yes. had 81 grams left of that. So I have enough well, to do you, a, Yes, a pair I told of you socks. let me know that. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, and it, to me, okay, you've, you've seen these socks that you can buy and they're kind of called spa socks where you could just mm -hmm. like you put them on mm -hmm. and they're sort of like a treat for your feet. That's what these feel like. They are, 
no, they, I will agree. These ones do not feel like butter. These ones just feel <laughs> so flipping soft. And do. uh, I don't know like that I would be wearing them. Well, maybe if it was really cold and I were wearing them in heavy boots, but yes. I would say these are more like a house slipper sock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so Mary had asked if it's some way it is like a dog. It is Mary. They um, actually, this company and it's Poppy's pom pom. You can take in your own dog's hair. Really? I didn't know that. Yes. Yes. She did. I, oh, here you go. I there think you it's go. 40... I got a card. Okay. Custom I... dog hair spinning. <laughs> I actually think it's 40% dog, like 40% Samoyed, I think. Was it not? That... Six, no, I think it's 60. You think 60? Yep. I okay. think it's 60, 40. All right. Mine is all tucked away. I can't get to it right now. But anyway, but anyways, we'll but I'll, I'll, we're going to link. Well, in the in the podcast tomorrow, we're going to link all the the vendors. So you'll be able to. You'll be able yes. to look it up, but I'm yes. pretty sure it was 60, but I could be wrong. You know, it's been, it's been a long weekend. So my brain's kind of fried, but here it says, imagine knitting a snuggly blanket or warm winter hat with yarn made from your fluffy best your friend. Your best friend, right? <laughs> That's right. How special is that? And they said they only need as little as a half a pound of floof. <laughs> I swear some people could get that in one brushing. Yeah. Right. That would so be this very is the little. Samoyed, and this is, I believe that when they do this, it's like the undercoat of the mm -hmm. dog and it's soft. Now, um, Mary was asking, does it smell bad when it's wet? I haven't blocked these yet, so I don't know, but we've had our, like Ross and I have worn our hats that were made with the Samoyed mm -hmm. and we've worn them out in the snow where they've gotten, and there's no, and smell. no, you couldn't smell anything. So yes. Uh, yeah. Linda's, Linda's laughing because I'm pretty sure she's had more than her fair share of dog hair this week. Her dog got skunked. And so oh, she's been uh, trying to de-skunk. <laughs> Duke and last I read on Instagram, he's pretty close to being de-skunked, but I'm sure she wants nothing to do with wet dog hair right now. No. I'm sure all that Linda can think about is a dog that smells like skunk, which That's is right. like one of the most so. unpleasant smells. Yeah. yeah. Now Petra has looked it up for us and she said it is 60% 60 Samoyed, 40% okay. Merino, 525 yards and 112 grams. And Thank you, Petra. Yeah. It's a huge skein, huge skein. Okay, I'm going to grab my balls and show you what I have left. <laughs> hey, hold the fort, Kelly. Okay, I've got it. And it was really good value, too. I, I believe it was $45 for that big skein. But if you think yes. about the fact that she's already gotten socks out of it, she's going to at least get another pair. I was actually thinking about a hat and mittens for my skein. Um, but I might want the socks. I don't know. It's so that's I still got all that left. Yeah. And how many, how many grams did you say you had left? Did you weigh that? I did, but I can't remember. Okay. But a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And then that's what I've got left of the other as well. Yeah. So that's that shows really that, that really shows pretty. the, that yarn. So you see, it does change. It does change up a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. So it really lightens it up. So yeah, so I'm. I don't know. I I think mitts would be amazing with this in it. Mm -hmm. I think so, so too. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So, anyways, that's we showed that now because that was basically that's what that's what I'm going to call these instead of socks on a plane. They're going to be socks on a train. Yeah. <laughs> so, so and then on the way there, speaking of socks, and Kelly has something to show you too. You should show show them yours. Okay. So this is what I worked on. I've seen this pattern a lot and I really have one. It's been in my, in my queue to make for a long time. And this is a project knit, not a process knit because it's all rib. It's two by two rib, the entire pattern. So I'm working on the, sorry, these needles are going to click on this blocker, but these are the uh, DRK everyday socks. And look at these, look at this amazing heel. Yeah, look at that. Great. That that ribbing just comes out of nowhere. You create this ribbing and they're so squishy. So they look pretty funny when they're not on a blocker. <laughs> because they're a really skinny, weird little shape. Like that's the foot. <laughs> I was looking at that on the drain and thinking, Kelly, I know your feet are bigger than mine, but those look so long. 
<laughs> yeah. But as soon as you put them on the blocker, because yeah, I'm size they, eight and a half, they're fine. Yeah. But they do look like <laughs> they look like they should fit on an elephant's stock or something. I don't know. They're just very strange looking socks, but they're super plush. Now, um, I think my ribbing looks a little wonky, but full disclosure, I had been knitting something else with this yarn and I pulled it out. So this first half is like curly, curly yarn. So you can see here that my ribbing is much nicer once I get into the, get the, the non -curly yarn. So I'll definitely block these before I wear them, but they, I just can't tell you how squish they are. I really, really, really like them. And this yarn is from our friend Vicki um, of Songbird yarn and fibers and it's called piping plover there's the a close up of the I'll, color i'll never forget that <laughs> no noelle will never forget this name but look at that i think this would actually i mean i kept saying a couple of years ago noelle was knitting a pair of socks by timber yarns and she was really struck with the colorway <laughs> and about every time she'd go into a color change she was holding them up to jacqueline and i and she's like aren't these gorgeous but just look at these guys aren't they gorgeous and I was totally doing that on the train I'd knit like an inch and then I'd like stick my hand up inside there I'm like look at that isn't that gorgeous <laughs> like just look at this color it would go with everything it would go with a dark brown it would go yes. with a burgundy yeah it would go with a cream colored mohair I would love yep. a sweater in this colorway like this and it's, it's got a really beautiful uh, kind of burnt orange in it too like a gorgeous yeah, yeah. gorgeous so yes, Julia, I was keeping things clean when I said an elephant stocking. <laughs> <laughs> nice of you to call me on it. <laughs> so we've got Nancy said she's late, but um, she's going to watch the recorded session in full. She's from South Texas. And we've got um, who else? Hey, is, Sheila. Sheila popped else. in. Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. <laughs> Sheila's still in Montreal. She extended her vacation. She had a well, little adventure the other night too, too after dinner. <laughs> we did. Well, Sheila, Sheila introduced us to vegan food and it was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> it, was it was so, so good. good. So we had a great dinner, a great we did. dinner. We did. Yeah. So, and yeah, so that was, that was, that was our knitting on a train. And the reason I'll never forget the, the piping plover is Kelly had started that you were casting it on before we got on the train in yeah. Toronto. Mm-hmm. Right. And I said, what yarn is that? It's so pretty. And she goes, oh, it's piping plover. I'm like, OK, piping plover. I've never heard of them. She thought it was a company. <laughs> well, she didn't say it was Songbird Studio piping plover. I just, and then we, oh, yeah, I just thought you knew. And then but then we were at knit night and Vicky was sitting with us and Vicky is the dyer behind Songbird fibers. And Kelly's going, look, look at my sock. And I'm like, <laughs> why would Vicky care? <laughs> It's her yarn. That's why she was here. I didn't figure that out till the next day when we were at her booth. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that, but that's the thing. Sometimes you think you think that you'll say something and you're so familiar with it. You think that the other person knows. Well, especially between us. Because, you know, yes. we're at the point sometimes where we can just like finish a sentence without, you know, we'll start something and then the other one finishes it because we're yeah. kind of in tune on the knitting. But uh, yeah. Oh, Sheila says so. it's another gorgeous day in Montreal. Sheila, it was gorgeous when we walked to the train station yesterday. Yes, for that six-minute walk to the train yeah. station, it was gorgeous because it was sure was cold before that. Yeah, it was. So anyway, on the train to my socks on a train, on the way there, I got most of this one done. Mm -hmm. So this is um, Patton's Croy. This color is called Purple Haze. And I, I mean... With some of the patents Croy colors, you really don't know what it's going to look like until nope. you're until you start knitting it. So I'm actually really pleased with it. And I just put in the plain gray heel. So this is one of my socks for Christmas for some of my pairs. So yes, yeah, so I hopefully I'll get the other one in the needles and get those finished. And that'll be two pairs done. I'm a little behind, but hopefully but you I were saying as you were knitting it, you said, "Well, I don't know. I really like this. Maybe I'm just going to keep this one." <laughs> I, but I actually made the foot long enough that it won't fit me. Okay. So, and then this, because this is the Croy, uh, for a change this time, I normally do a 2.25 needle and do mm -hmm. 64 stitches when I'm doing all the girl socks. But for this, I went to 60 stitches and I'm on a 2.5 millimeter needle. And I like the fabric better. It's not quite as bulletproof as when you do it on a 2.25. And I'm a tight knitter. So I, I think it really did work well to go up that needle size and go down stitches. 
Yeah. And plus that makes them faster to knit. <laughs> yeah. It turned so. out really nice. Yeah. So the only thing I did, it's not, I didn't do any pattern or anything in the sock. I just did the little um, twisted rib in the cuff or mm -hmm. little, not twisted rib, but little mock cable in the cuff just to give it a little bit of something. So. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Julia said that my sweater turned out really nice. Your so, sweater is nice. It's beautiful. The story behind that is I wanted to make a sweater. It's actually, it was a ranunculus uh, that I made for, for Knit City. And I cast it on last Sunday afternoon. So I actually finished it in six days, which it's a super short sweater. It's a crop and it has three quarter sleeves, but still, I mean, I did a sweater in six days. Now, would I have gotten it done? Yes, I would have. However, on the train... <laughs> on the train, I still had two sleeves to do because I had finished the body and blocked it because I knew it needed to, it needed to be blocked because I used Holst and I used a strand of mohair. So in order to see the lace, I had to open that up. So I blocked the body and just had it left on pony cord cables. And I get on the train and I thought, well, I'm going to get this knit. So I got the first sleeve knit, which, you know, it's, it's pretty quick. It was on five size five needles. So it was moving along pretty quickly. And so I thought, well, there, now I, I can work on something else. Like maybe this. Nope. Nope. That Noel. She's like, oh no, you have to get the other sleeve done now. You have to finish this before we get to Montreal. And I'm like, well, you know, I've knit a whole sleeve. And I said, I'm not planning to wear it until Sunday. Oh no. She says, you have to get it done. So I have to, I said, well, you know, a true friend would knit the second sleeve for me. She, she didn't offer. We have different times. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I, I didn't say you had to knit the whole sleeve. I said, just get it. Just get it on the needles. <laughs> Yeah, but then, you know, I knit the arm and I'm like, okay, well, now all I have left is the uh, is the ribbing. So you might as well finish that. So anyway, I got it finished. And so I did wear it in Montreal and I loved it. I really like it. Uh, I, I loved it. And I paired it with a dress that I made. It's a linen dress and it's the metamorphic dress by So Liberated. So it sort of has like a two layered dress. You can actually flip the dress inside out yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, wear it as a as a different dress. But yes. You're right, Sarah, that Noel, she is a taskmaster. <laughs> I told you you'd thank me later. I never thanked her. I, but, I said you walk, but I said you're welcome anyway. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, no, I'm happy to have it done. And for me, that was really good. Like, I'm not normally the kind of person that can knit a sweater in six days. You know, I've said this before. I don't have a lot of knit time in a day, um, but it, it did go really quick. And so like, that's okay. Now I'm no longer an owner of a ranunculus. I'm now an owner of ranunculi. I have two of that's them. Right, I have two. Right. I'm not catching up with the, um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but last week she said, while well, oh, she was in had, here that she had that 40, she 40, 40, 40 <laughs> ranunculus sweaters. And uh, I'm nowhere near that, but I get why people knit them again and again. It was so fun. Well, I'm going to do another one because I wanted you. I wanted you a little short one like that. And then, and since when we started, well, when you started doing them, we decided that that if you're going to do one and it's going to go with a dress that's got a higher waist, you need to try it on with that when you're trying it on. Yes. Yes. So because otherwise, it looks like you're it looks like you're knitting like a little bra top. <laughs> like when I showed it to Noelle, she sort of laughed. She goes, "That's for you," and I go, "Yeah, it's for me." <laughs> the sweater is seven inches long from the armpit, mm -hmm. so it is pretty short it is yeah and um, so. oh who's making a comment this this was funny who said that something about noel oh yeah julia <laughs> so it's good thing you listened to noel because she might have started to count and then we'd have no choice because noel counts very quickly <laughs> as we know i was going to go back here because someone asked about the croy um gail asked if this was more than one skein this is not, Gail, this is less than a skein. This heel is done in another yarn, but I could have done the, the heel in the croy. I would have had enough to do the heel in the croy. So I've got a second ball. I didn't start the next one because I want to try and match up the socks exactly. So I'll start the second ball and start it just at the same spot. But yeah, there's there's still enough left that I could have done the heel. So there you go. Sue so says I'm a knitting coach. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a different term. Like if when you're around oh, Noel, whips, you're so whips sweet. are yeah. When you're around Noel, whips have more than one meaning. Let's just say that if you're knitting with Noel, <laughs> and then I was trying to exact some revenge on her too because Noel has another um, 
another thing that she's famous for is, you know, if you're working out of a skein of yarn and then, you know, you've got to pull out that center. Right. And then yep. when the, if a mess comes out and we frequently have called that yarn barf, if Noelle's rule is if you pull out yarn barf, you can't go to bed till the yarn barf is knit. So like you can't just leave that mess carrying on. So I said to her, behave yourself because if, you, if you're not careful, I'm going to reach in that ball of croy and I'm pulling the entire middle out. And I said, you're going to be up till one o'clock, which will be a record for you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I thought it would just cut it off and throw it in the garbage and buy a new one at the festival. <laughs> Anyway, we got, we got, we did get a lot of knitting done. So Mary has, uh, we did, we, we did. I, yeah. I definitely, I, I think I spent more. Well, I definitely did. I knit more in four days at the festival than I ever could have knit at home because, you know, we did have 12 hours for two of those days on a train. Yeah. Cause there's how far I got on my muscle burrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're almost and I done. Basically I stopped on the train last night because I wasn't sure where I was exactly. Cause we hadn't brought our scale with us. So I stopped and I was getting a little tired of knitting it and I didn't, I'd already finished the sock and I couldn't start the new one because my other ball of yarn was in my suitcase. So I did have my Mondeem with me. So Kelly, Kelly had extra needles, which I did have needles because I brought all of my sock needles and three sets of interchangeables <laughs> with me because you never know. Right? But can I just say whose needles did she end up knitting with at the end of the night last night? Mine, <laughs> because she didn't but have what she needed. But I did have them. They were just packed away in my suitcase. Yeah. Because I didn't think I'd need them at the... But anyway, so I so I started a little shorty pair and got the, the rib all done. So that was nice because it was a little bit different than just the round and round yes. for the muscle burrow. So... Yes. Somebody yeah. was so talking... Patricia says 12-hour train ride. Patricia, it wasn't totally 12 hours. It was... We, we got on at... Felt like 40. 11. <laughs> yeah, it felt like the last... The last... Okay, it took longer to get from Toronto to Sarnia, which you can drive in three hours. Three or less, hours. <laughs> than it took to get from Montreal to Toronto. Yes. Yeah. So we stopped at every place that every little village that had more than five people in their population. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so total knitting time was probably about 12 hours. We did have a kind of a break in Toronto. We had about an hour or so. <laughs> so that we could get chicken so shawarma. So we could go get some spicy chicken shawarma. <laughs> anyway. Oh, dear. Carol is talking again about the height difference. So, all right. There was at one point, I think we were getting ready to go out to knit night or something. And I said, oh, we should. Do oh, no. It was um, the first day. I said, oh, we should take a picture of us in our in our outfits. I had the camera. I could rest my head on the, or I my know, chin just like on this. Noelle's head. <laughs> head. And she was wearing her tall shoes. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you were wearing taller shoes that day. Like, it was a good thing I wasn't wearing my Blundstones when you had your tall shoes on. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. Oh. Uh, someone was talking about. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I missed oh, it. Valerie's talking about, she was talking a little bit about the love note having children's sizes um, from baby to adult. It does because I have knit, I, I think I've knit the size one and I've knit about the size three, four. So there's all different variations of kid sizes as well. It's not just like one size because I've knit several of them for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I was going to go back. We We were kind of reading through the comments a little bit before we started and who was it? Someone knew. Was it was it um, uh, Cricket that had Cricket. said she had just bought her or her, got her first whole first sorter? whole sorters. Yeah, and she got um, four cones. Yay! So, yeah, so that's awesome. And so I did do a little bit of work. I did start my sweater a sweater with holes. So I started the um, Silver Forest by Jennifer Steingas. So. I got a picture it in here still. Doesn't look like, it doesn't look like much now. Is the picture? Yeah. So there's the picture. So my colors are obviously different than that. Okay. But there's the colors that I've just started. So my main color is the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And then I think this color is called Damson. I'm not positive. And then the almond. And then the green is the kingfisher. So this was kind of different because this is a provisional cast on down here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically you cast on, for my size, it was like 384 stitches in provisional cast on, and then you knit three rows and then you start. So I am knitting up. So that'll be the yoke. I'm knitting up like that. 
And then you'll go back and you will pick up those provisional stitches and then knit the body down. So I've never done a sweater like that before. So it's, it's interesting. It looks like so many stitches when you cast on that mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. and there's no reference point of like a, a ribbed neck or a ribbed hem. Yes. So it looks huge, but I'm looking at the stitch count compared to other stitch, other mm -hmm. projects that I've done and it's right on. So, and that's the first time I've used that provisional and it is, in the pattern by Jennifer Steingast, and she calls it, I think we talked last week, she calls it cow yak. Cow yak. Yep. So C O W Y A K, which is cast on waist, waist yarn, yarn and, and knit. knit. And that is exactly as simple as it is. You just cast on with your waist yarn and you knit for the first three rows. Mm -hmm. So Mary had a question. She wanted to know some insight between the ranunculus and the love note. Any preferences? They are, they are probably the two sweaters, the go-to sweaters that everybody thinks of as like the super quick knit, you know, on your needles, off your needles that have a lot of flexibility. Um, now I can comment because I've knit both of them, right. uh, because I do have two love notes as well. I would say the main difference between the two of them is the, is, is the yoke. Now the love the note is definitely more open than the ranunculus. Um, so <clears throat> Like with that being said, I know that with my love note, I definitely have to wear something underneath it because the pattern shaping comes down quite low and the hearts that are in it are quite open. So it's, you know, more, uh, you can see more of what's underneath the sweater, I guess. The ranunculus, the the lace work, there's a little bit, but it's higher on the chest and, it's not and a little open. more closed in and it's not as open, no. But the, if you look at the tensions of the two sweaters, the love note is actually worked at a tighter tension yes. than what the ranunculus is. But I mean, lots of times we've adjusted. I know when I've done mine, when I do the ranunculus, I do not do it to the tension that the pattern specifies because it's quite loose. Like, no. I don't know if yours is or not when you put the, and no, it's quite it's loose, loose. And, and the, yeah. And, and I went down to needle sizes out, too. Quite, yeah. So a lot depends on that. Another difference is the love note comes in a lot more size options yes. because I mean, the, the ranunculus is basically for an adult, whereas the love note starts right down at a baby and goes mm -hmm. all the way up. Mm -hmm. So, and basically I think the love note, if you weren't going to use a mohair and a fingering held together, you basically could do it with a DK weight yarn. Mm -hmm. And I know there have been ranunculuses where people have just done them with a waistlet yarn just to get that really loose open open feeling but mm -hmm. but yeah like i would say in looks they're kind of similar they're they're kind, they're of, kind of similar yep and they're kind and of I constructed will say, the same way they're top knits, down yep so and at knit city that was they were probably definitely the prevalent sweaters like you you yep. could stand in one spot and probably count 10 love notes or 10 renun ranunculi yep. around yep. you um well, they're versatile because you can you can adjust the um you can adjust the length that you want to do it you can adjust mm -hmm. the sleeves um, like Kelly's got sleeves on hers, but you can also do the ranunculus just like with a little cap sleeve. So all you're basically, basically doing at that point is casting off and then finishing the body. And if you do one like that, basically when you cast off the body, you're done, right? There's mm -hmm. no sleeves to pick up for. Mm -mm. So, but yes, there were a lot of them at the festival and I brought mine. I finished my love note, but I didn't end up wearing it because I had, oh, that's right. You didn't either. Too. No, yeah. well, I was going to wear it on the way home. home. And it was just too warm. On we the found train, the train so. warm on the way there. That's right. Yeah. Petra is talking about uh, the Corbis sweater and saying that we have to cast one of those on. Okay. I'll I've not even up. heard of that one. Nope. So I'm going to look. I've written it down. I'll have a okay. look at it for sure. And um, someone had asked back, I think it was Klaska had asked if the if I was holding the the Holst double. And no, the, the, the Silver Forest by Jen Stein gas is actually a 28 stitch gauge. So it's actually perfect for holes just held single. Yes. So, yeah. Um, Lynn is saying that she took the train from Vancouver to Montreal in the seventies. Well, I was going to say, so did I, but that's not true. I took the train from Toronto to Nova Scotia. Okay. It would have been in the seventies. I was just, I don't remember it. I was four years old, but um, we had a, we had a sleeper car. We got to stay overnight on the train 
And I was saying to, to Noelle on the first leg of our trip, I said, this is awesome. We need to do this again. We need, we could train everywhere now because <laughs> this way, neither one of us has to be the sacrificial driver so that the only one can knit, right? We could, we could train everywhere. She goes, well, I don't know about that. I said, oh, that would be fun. We could get a sleeper car and stay over. But I said, the dreadful part is you'd have to get up the next day and come back to these really hard seats. And the seats are pretty yeah. hard on there. I will admit. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, it was, it was fun. Um, Amy wanted to know if we saw the folly skirt and yes, we did. And it was beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, it is so beautiful. Now I, we, I we actually plan already, <laughs> I have plans already. Yes. But, and I actually talked to Stephanie, Stephanie was at the, uh, mm -hmm. the Les Paz Trico booth and I told her, you know, that I loved the skirt, but I was thinking of doing it in, um, a fingering weight and she goes, Oh yeah, you could totally do it in a fingering weight. You just got to adjust through your tension. And so she said, make sure that if you do it, like you let me know and, but I, I think it would work with a fingering weight and I'd have to size it down anyway, because it would have been way too long for me, but it, it was, it was absolutely gorgeous. So. It, it would almost be a maxi skirt on you as it was, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus I find that I would find in the worsted, the Corey worsted, I would probably find it hot. I think so too. So that would so. be limited, um, limited opportunities to wear it, right? Yeah. So who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe for next year, <laughs> we'll have to look at making some, um, some skirts. And we saw, we did see, um, I saw a few knitted skirts there. We saw, well, we saw Claudia there with her beautiful dress. Absolutely mm. gorgeous. It was just, oh, it was stunning. stunning. So now I really want to do a dress or a skirt or just mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. different. So, so Kelly has just given us, um, the name of a, of a pocket scale, a digital pocket scale. So I've written that one down too. Might have to look that up because I probably don't want to travel again without one. that after having needed it once, you know, you'll need it twice for sure. Yep. So uh, Janet is talking again about the love note. She said that she's actually seen a few people knit it and leave the lace out. Um, yes. Actually, Jolyn had well, that on. That's right. Uh, Jolyn from uh, Little Red Mitten was wearing one on Sunday and it was a beautiful color. And uh, she had left the pattern out of it completely. She just wanted that shaping and she used it as a crop sweater. She was wearing yep. it with a dress and it looked, yep. looked really nice. Yep. Really nice. Um, Marnie Lee says she's going to make the silver forest. It, I mean, Jennifer Stein gas patterns are gorgeous. Absolutely. They're just the most beautiful. And, yoke. Yeah. And I really, I do really like, um, like this sweater is a little bit heavier like this is, but it doesn't feel warm because this is the, the Barocco vintage and it's got the a little, like it's got cotton and linen in it. There's no wool mm -hmm. in it, but when you get a heavier weight, like this is a worsted to an Aaron weight, when you get a heavier weight like that in a wool yarn, it's quite a warm sweater when you're done. Mm -hmm. So like I prefer, I prefer to do sweaters in fingering weight. Like I do some in DK, but I just find, I know that you can knit a worsted weight sweater faster, but they're just, yes. I don't get the wear out of them because they're, I find them they're harder to wear. Yeah. 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 So, uh, May Jo is asking which sweater would be easier to knit for a beginner uh, between we're back onto the love note ranunculus. Um, I mean, I would say I would say probably the ranunculus simply because there's less detail in the yoke. So you're going to get through you're going to get through the part with pattern in it quicker. See, I was going to go the other way because I felt that there was less detail in the ranunculus, but I felt there was um, more written instruction in the love note pattern okay but having said that uh the ranunculus pattern uh she has if you um if you have the pattern and then you go back onto her ravelry page every single like new step that she incorporates into that sweater she has a video of it and mm -hmm. she is very thorough there's no speaking in the video it's it's just watching her hands do the work but she's very intentional with her actions and very slow so that you can see her technique really, really well. So I would say just be fearless, pick, pick, pick the, the one, one that you like the best yeah. and go for it. I think yeah. there's support out there for you either way. And if you get stuck on something, you know what? Um, there are lots of people to help. There are people in here to help, you know, yep. send us a message. If you're stuck on something, always happy to help. It's such an exhilarating feeling to finish your first sweater. Like if it's, if, if you're uh, feeling afraid and then you, you get over that hump and you conquer it, 
it's like there's no better feeling you're going to be wearing that sweater you are you are up here on cloud nine that you got that done so just jump in jump yep in. the um the ranunculus takes less yarn yes that's true too so if you're looking at if you've only got a limited amount of yardage you might want to look at that too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay so kim says she likes my sweater but it's not size inclusive how would you make it to a size 54 you, you would probably have to add in like a whole like you would have to add stitches in in a whole repeat of this um pattern here i would i would um i would email the designer because i have heard other people say on podcasts where a particular pattern wasn't size inclusive and they actually emailed the designer and they did get so if you're really mm -hmm. interested i would email the designer and see if there's any suggestions that she could make or to help you out with that because obviously it's gonna it's probably gonna have to be i think any of the increases that were in the pattern were done by increasing this whole motif yes so yeah uh, <laughs> pat's talking about a sleeper train that she was on they were over the wheel on in the sleeper car and she said she had to have her husband come down from the top bunk so that she wouldn't bounce up and down, down. <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> natalie is saying knit it for woodstock <laughs> 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 oh that's well that's that's not till that's not till october i could do that you could do that i could do that and you have Let's, all the colors and yeah, it's not like it, you, ha you don't true. even have to knit it very long because you know it's <laughs> yeah okay I'll, I'll get on that <laughs> yeah classic is saying that the grocery girls both knit the love note without the lace as well and i i, I thought that they had yes so mm -hmm. i think and that was a while ago too that they but don't they don't discount the lace because it's not it's not like just you know it's, it's still not one, scary one, not that's scary right lace. and it's still you can put markers in where you're yep. where the at different the re repeats of the pattern is and yep. just take it one stitch at a time like it's not sometimes we look at it and it's scarier it looks scarier than we think it is to and when we actually try it if you just do it one step at a time oftentimes you'll find that it's not as bad as you thought or you know if you're so. like me I don't read ahead in a pattern when I, <laughs> I found this out last night, I just jump into the pattern. And when I get there, I get there. Sometimes that works for me. Sometimes it's worked against me. It's like last night when I was putting the, um, the increases in for this gusset, I thought, Oh, I have eight more. It says do this like three times. So I had eight more rows to get these increases in and I finished it. And I'm like, whoo, last increase row. And then it says now do rows one to four again. So I said to know, Oh, four more, four more rows. But. Yeah. Well, that's like, I, I was in the hotel room at one point I was working on, I started this vest last week. So this mm -hmm. is the, this Pretty. is the Laura vest by um, Irene Lynn. And it's the same thing. Like Kelly goes, well, well, how do you join it up? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a really part. long pattern. I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> it was the, I mean, okay. So the the detail in the pattern is amazing like every row is listed out but there is also a chart and i would much rather work with a chart mm -hmm. than read it out so mm -hmm. so the the pattern went row by row telling you where the increases were and i would prefer it just to say increase this many rows and some designers do that some designers will give you like a short version for someone who can do it with just minimal saying okay at this at you know increase two stitches every fourth every fourth row until this right. but then some people prefer to have it written out so you're kind of going row by row and some designers will do both so this i actually could just work from the chart and i figured out how often the increases were and i was able to do it like that mm -hmm. but yeah so this actually you're going to pick up the shoulder seams and go down and then it's it's um got a v-neck and then i'm going to make it short and i'm going to try it on to go with i've got I think a dress that I can wear this with, and then I've got yeah. a blouse that I want to wear it with. So basically, probably from here to here to the armhole is going to be shorter than the the length from the armhole to where I want it to stop. Right, right. So, yeah. But yeah, it so it, it was, a. I I did look at it after, and you do pick up along the shoulder seams and knit down, but okay. I didn't I didn't need to know that at that point, so I hadn't read it yet. And I mean, um, we've got NJ says she must read the pattern first and that's fine like you you do what's yeah, comfortable we all for you. go after a project differently yeah yeah and there's no right yeah. way no wrong way it's no it's, now it's having how, said how that, you do it 
I have also done that and I'll do something and then I get to the end of it and it says at the same time. <laughs> I know. And then, yeah, that's what I said. It's bit me sometimes, but you know, I just, I like to just dive into the knitting. I, I just do too, go, but really, right? but really <clears throat> the I wisest know. thing to do is read through your pattern first, at least so you have mm -hmm. a general idea of the construction and it, it is not, it isn't fun when you get to a point that says at the same time and you've already knit this much fabric. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Nancy just started the panic sweater by Casa Pinka. And that's the one oh, I had talked that's about the one. Yep. a couple of weeks ago. And I still, I'm, it's still, it's like high up in my queue to make for sure. But uh, I actually think I wanted to make it more of a sweater than I wanted for the dress that I took to Knit City. So I backed off on that one quickly and just, and made a, a faster, quicker sweater, but I'm still making it. Yep. It, um, now Pat says that you can find the Corvus sweater that that Dinah of the Knitting Place, which is in New York, she's knit it and it's on her Ravelry page. And so you can okay. see that's a, Good. oh, Good. and she said, and her version is better than the pick on Ravelry. And sometimes you will see a pattern page on Ravelry. And if you actually go through some of the projects, you will get yeah. a better idea of the actual yeah. look of this one. For sure, for sure. So, uh, now Shirley said she was gonna cast on a love note um, in DK with no mohair and the simple summer sweater. So those are her goals. And that's good. Sure. Lots of people have done the love note using a DK. And you did. Instead you of did doing one. the, yes, I did. I did mine in the summer silk by Broco, just in the DK weight yarn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I mean, it turned out fine too. And actually when you do it in a yarn that you don't have the fuzz of the mohair, you actually really can see the lace detail a lot crisper too. Mm -hmm. So Anne says that she has bought both patterns. She doesn't didn't know which one to make, but she's now been given the push that she needs. So she's going to go for Good. the ranunculus. Go Anne. Good. Go Anne. Good. You got this. You've yep. got this. And yep. Mary is thrilled to announce that she has accomplished German short rows and raglan sleeves at the same time. Good, Good for you, Mary. Those are yep. great accomplishments. Isn't that so. fun when you get like when you see something as kind of being like insurmountable and then all of a sudden you've got it and you're like, oh, I did this. It always makes me think of this, uh, the Tom Hanks moment in, in Castaway where he finally, finally makes the fire. And he's like, I have yeah. created fire. I need to like, of course, he's got nobody to share that excitement with. So <laughs> just himself. So Sarah says she's working on her first boxy. And it's taking forever. That is that is a lot of knitting in that sweater. But Sarah, knitting. you will like it. Like that, I've got a couple of boxies, and they're so easy fitting. And yeah, she's got a one of a kind from Leo and Roxy that she got at Woolstock. So that would be awesome. But yes, they are a lot of knitting. But it's perfect podcast watching knitting. It's perfect train knitting because <laughs> it's just you're basically once you get to a certain point, you're just going round and round. So it's like a muscle burrow but bigger. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marnie Lee is just oh. about finished her Douglas Cardi by Andrew Mowry. That is a great Cardi too. Really like that one. And okay. There's more chatter in here about this Corvus. Definitely We're, going I'm to definitely check that out that for when sure. this is done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the good, the nice thing about Ranunculus and Love Note are too, because you can do, you can do summer versions and you can do winter versions mm -hmm. and it's pretty adaptable. You can do it as a sweater that you wear with nothing. Well, I mean, as a sweater, or you can use it as something that you use as a layering piece. Yes. So, yes. so where is the next knitting festival <laughs> that, that we can get to? Does anybody know what's coming up next? Like I know that we have Kitchener coming up later in the year, um, Woodstock, but Anything else? There's Kawartha. <laughs> I think Kawartha's Kawartha. in June. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at a, a list because I was looking at the list on where Poppy's pom poms were going to, oh, and okay. I can't remember. There was something coming up soon, but it was like I can't remember where it was. Kawartha's in June. Okay. Julia. Oh, Kawartha's says. in June. Okay. Twist, oh, is, twist in is in August. And someone had asked us about Twist when we were in Montreal because I do think it is somewhere in Quebec as well. Okay. Oh, Anna says there's one in Aurelia. Karen oh, just Karen finished the Corvus. Just... Is it rude to leave our own channel to go look at a pattern and come back? 
<laughs> no, no. She said she just checked it out on Ravelry and it's gorgeous. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Um, Becky says there's one in, oh, Fiber Frolic in Edmonton. That would okay. be a long train ride. <laughs> but not a very long plane ride. No. <laughs> and it would be direct. No. Would yes. Be direct. Yes. Um, Marilyn Sheep and Wool. Yes. I know we were even talking about Rhinebeck on the weekend, but we were. I just don't know. We were. We have to one 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 fiber festival at a time. <laughs> There's one in New Jersey too. Yeah, the the New Jersey uh those Maryland sheep and wool. And I do yeah, I do think that the New Jersey sheep and wool too. I just and that's don't know drivable. Where they all are. That one's yeah. drivable. Yeah. So yeah, we have to look at Becky's retreat sometime too and see Absolutely. if we can fit one of those in. Yes. <gasps> oh, Victoria wants to know if we want to go to Albuquerque. Sure. May 7th um, for Maryland Sheep and Wool. Okay. We Where missed else? one in Ohio. Last Great oh, Lakes Fiber last Festival in Ohio. Oh, was last, the last week no, in May. No, the last okay. week in May. Okay. Okay. Well, we have to we have to make a plan, Kelly. <laughs> okay. One in Bracebridge on July 2nd, Lauren says. Okay. Oh, <sighs> because we need yarn, right? No. Yeah, no, right. Don't. Yes, but we just wanted it's. It was I, it was I don't just know fun. like we just it had such fun. a high to be around so many other knitters that know. you know it's so inspiring and um, yes there is Knit City Vancouver June yes and including a baby visit and big news big news on the home front here Mr Miles coming back to Ontario he's coming for a visit from May second to the 9th. I think he's bringing his mother with him but yes of course he is. <laughs> Uh, so uh, there will probably be another little mile sighting coming up on a knit chat one evening uh, in the first week of May. Uh, there's a small fiber festival in middle Tennessee near Dixon over Memorial Day. There's places for us to go. Oh, Anna says she'll be in Bracebridge. Oh. <laughs> Sheila's just laughing about the need yarn. <laughs> well, okay, Sheila. You can't laugh too hard. You came away with quite a little haul yourself. <laughs> yeah, I want to go. I have never been out to the, the Canadian West and I want to go out there so badly. <laughs> so. Well, we'll go. We'll go. We okay. have to say good night to the name who we can't mention. <laughs> or I can't mention it anyway, because a certain machine in my oh, basement starts okay. chatting back. But good night. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, we should we should talk about our knit alongs. Gosh, yes. It's been that Oh, we're we should. over an hour already. So we have two knit alongs going on right now. So the first one is our smash that stash since oh, we yes. just like added substantially to ours. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't count now. No, or but, but for we us. still did add to our stash. <laughs> yes, we did significantly. Okay. So the smash your stash is going on until the end of April. We extended it, but for anybody that got their projects done and in, by the end of March the 31st, we are on the next podcast, not tomorrow's, but we are on the next podcast going to draw a prize for that. But then we mm -hmm. are also going to draw at the end of April. So yes. the only rules and regulations for that are the yarn has to have been in your stash on or before December 31st, 2021. You have to use at least 50 grams of yarn and no whips. Okay. Right. Right. Um, the second knit along that we have going on that we have going on all year long is our sock knit along. Mm -hmm. It started January 1st. You just have to finish a pair of socks, put them in. Doesn't matter when you started them, whenever they're finished, you put them in the thread on Ravelry and we draw prizes at the end of every month. We draw a pattern prize and we draw a yarn prize. And the pattern prize is generously donated by Natalie, our friend Natalie from Remembrances Pottery. And we draw, we go back to the beginning of the year and draw to the end of whatever particular month we're working in. So, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get 2022 pairs for 2022. Yes. And we're, we're getting there. And Kelly and I have got our, our sock mojos coming back. Oh, it's coming back with a vengeance. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, and, and yes, Mary, you can double dip. Absolutely. Double dip. Double yes. dip, triple dip. Quadruple dip. <laughs> dip as much as you want to dip. Yes, absolutely. Right. And something else I wanted to mention too, coming up this Friday on uh, April the 8th. Is it? Yes. It's that Friday. Um, at Little Red Mitten, if you're local 
anywhere near us, uh, Little Red Mitten is having Ginger Snap pop in and do a pop-up shop from two until seven. And then they yeah. also have a knit night going on from six till eight. Uh, I know yes. Noelle and I are going, so uh, it'd be a great opportunity just to get back and spend some time with some knitters and to check out uh, what Ginger Snap has going on too. If yeah. you weren't able to, you know, get to a festival, this is a uh, festival is kind of coming to you a little bit. So that's that's yeah, nice so Little too. Red Mitten is in St. Thomas, Ontario. So yeah, it would it's gonna be a great night. Absolutely. Because <laughs> so, we haven't we won't have been around yarn for four days. <laughs> We're bringing things to knit on. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, to kind of summarize that, new episode tomorrow on um uh, Knit City Montreal. Yeah. And um, it was nice to see. There were lots of people in here tonight. It was so good to see everybody in here. So if you uh, if you enjoyed yourself in here, please give the channel a like. Uh, our subscribers are going up. That works out really well for us too, and well for you. And um, yeah, we've there'll be some prizes not in this tomorrow's episode, but we've got some prizes coming up in the next one. And yep, yeah. And Natalie wanted things. to know the little red mitten. It's this Friday, Natalie, from two till seven. So it's the eighth. Yes. So April the eighth. So yeah. Kelly okay, wants to so know where we're located. We're in southwestern Ontario. Yeah. Canada. <laughs> yes, Canada. I know. I know. When I was texting Ross yesterday and I said we just left London, I was gonna put Ontario. <laughs> And when we left Wyoming, I was going to put Ontario. Ontario. Still in Ontario. <laughs> Still in Ontario. We could walk home faster. <laughs> Anyways, oh, there was goodness. at one point. You know what? Like Ross was saying, there is this app. So he was following the train. So he actually could see the train speed. <laughs> that would be one slow moving app, let me tell you. <laughs> I guess he missed me. <laughs> like, when is she going to be home? He tried to tell me he didn't today. When I called you this afternoon, he said, no. he's just up in the washroom. And he goes, and I said, well, I call her back. He goes, no, I think she's coming down. I hear the pitter patter of her little feet. And I said, oh, I bet you missed that sound this weekend. He goes, nope, not once. And I said, oh, you're such a hardy, aren't you? You know what he liked? He liked the fact that there was no yarn cluttering up the couch for four Is that what days. He liked? <laughs> yeah. Finally, I can sit on that side of the couch. He's thinking. That's right. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Um, so awesome ideas and awesome uh, information for us, everybody for all the fiber fest and hopefully we'll get to some more this year and we will, we'll be able to meet some of you. That would be amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah. So, so make sure, make sure you tune in tomorrow and you can see some of our adventures in Montreal and the fun that we had and uh, you know, we can share hopefully maybe some new yarns that you haven't heard of before. And yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks so for coming thanks out. for meeting with us tonight. We're we'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, take care, everybody, and happy knitting. Happy knitting.